Welcome everyone to the final video of the first round of this year's Saint Madness Tournament. Today we will learn about the last three new saints before next week we move on to round two where we have saint duels until the end of the series. So let's go ahead and jump right into some trivia about last episode's saints. We will begin with Saint Hildegard. And our question is very simple. How many older siblings did Hildegard have? The correct answer is nine older siblings. She was the last born out of ten, which makes nine older siblings. Now our question for St. Anthony of Egypt. He is known as the father of all what? The correct answer is all monks. Of course, we all knew St. Anthony is not a heretic practicing monophysitism. And lastly, let's see our question about St. Martha. Oh, hold on, that's the wrong question there. Sorry about that. St. Martha's real question. We want to know, St. Martha can be found in which two Gospels in the Bible? And the correct answer is Luke and John, the last two Gospels. You can read about St. Martha there. And now let's find out our winner. So as you can see here, we had two saints who were popular and unfortunately one saint who wasn't the favorite of very many people. Beginning with the most votes, we had Saint Anthony of Egypt. And joining him in round two with 174 votes is Saint Martha. She will go on to face St. Anthony in the second round, which means that, unfortunately, St. Hildegard is eliminated from the tournament, which is a bummer. St. Hildegard also was in the tournament two years ago and got eliminated then as well. So we can see Anthony and Martha moving on there to face in the second round. But now let's say a prayerful farewell to St. Hildegard, beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, source of life, you have bestowed on St. Hildegard of Bingen many excellent graces. Help us to follow her example of meditating on your indescribable majesty, and to follow you so that we, amidst the darkness of this world, recognize your light and cling to you without fail. Amen. St. Hildegard, pray for us. And now it's time to meet... Our final first round Saint Showdown will be between Saint Jerome, Saint Martin of Tours, and Saint Genesius of Rome. Today we will begin with Saint Jerome. Saint Jerome was born around 342 AD to a wealthy Christian family in Croatia or Slovenia. As a child, St. Jerome would get in trouble a lot, despite his parents trying to raise him as best they could. At a very young age, St. Jerome began his studies from his house with his parents as his teachers. But at the age of 12, he was sent to Rome, where he would continue his studies under the Roman grammarian, Aelius Donatus. In Rome, when Jerome was not studying, he was out partying and pursuing pleasure, even though he knew it was wrong. In 365, St. Jerome decided he wanted to be a more holy man and was baptized by Pope Liberius. After he was baptized and completed his studies, Jerome built a library where he copied down most of the works he had read throughout his life. He also translated the Bible from Old Greek, which most people did not know, into Standard Latin, which was the most prominent language at the time. And this famous translation is called the Vulgate. St. Jerome wanted to read more works about many different cultures, 
so he made a pilgrimage to many parts of the world, mostly Asia. St. Jerome loved this trip so much that he decided to live in the city of Antioch, Syria. Eventually, St. Jerome died in Bethlehem from old age. Today, he is buried in the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore in Rome, close to where Jesus was born. And now, our presentation for St. Martin of Tours. He was born into a pagan military family around 316. He was born in modern-day Hungary and raised in Italy. Before his birth, Christianity was legalized in the Roman Empire. At the age of 10, Martin became a catechumen against his parents' will. At the age of 15, Martin was drafted into the Roman army. He is thought to have served as part of the emperor's guard. During his time in the army, Martin spotted an unclothed beggar. He cut his own cloak in half with his sword and handed the beggar one half of his cloak. Later that night, he had a dream where Jesus was wearing the half of the cloak that he had given to the beggar. After Martin was released from the army, he became an acolyte. While in Pannonia, he converted his mother and a group of bandits to Christianity. Shortly after, the devil appeared to him and said, No matter where he went or what he did, the devil would oppose him. Around 371, Tours chose Martin as its third bishop. Martin didn't want to become bishop, and he was unwilling to take office, but he was tricked into visiting the city. He refused to occupy the bishop's residence and refused to sit on the bishop's throne. Instead, he sat on a three-legged stool. St. Martin of Tours is an awesome saint, and he deserves your vote. And last, but certainly not least, let's learn about St. Genesius of Rome. St. Genesius is the best saint, and I will explain why. Genesius lived in the 300s in Rome. Pretty cool, right? Well, he was also a comedian, and I know you're already liking him. Anyways, Genesius got to perform in front of the emperor, Diocletian, in plays that criticized Christianity. But wait, if he criticized Christianity, then why is he a saint? I will explain. One day while performing, Genesius was playing a sick, bedridden guy, and he announced to the crowd that the only cure to his sickness was baptism. <laughs> so Genesius took a bowl full of water and plunged his head into the water. But when he took his head out of the water, something miraculous happened. Genesius had a conversion experience on stage and immediately stopped his act. Diocletian, the emperor from earlier, ordered Genesius to continue, but he refused. Eventually, Genesius was arrested and eventually beheaded. Today, Genesius is known as the patron saint of comedy and comedians. So please vote for me, Saint Genesius, if you want to see more great comedy.